What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we're going to be traveling into an Arizona prison following a news crew to the condemned death row. News crews have never gone before inside Arizona's lethal injection chamber to explain some of the mystery behind how the death penalty is carried out. It's a very intense experience, John and Carrie, and I'm going to take you with us here. What we're about to yeah, see are the tools and processes used to take the lives of murderers who judges and juries have decided should die for their crimes. But these processes could change soon because of the problems. Did we just witness a UFO? Who judges and juries have decided should die. Probably just doing a little crop dusting, you know. I don't know. Secure team. Mount up. But these processes could change soon because of the problems states are having with getting these execution drugs. We'll have more on that in a minute. But let's begin with a walk through the gates of death row. Let's do it. I ain't lying, I'm a little scared. Browning you. The sign says condemned row. But it's better known as death row. All the men here committing crimes so terrible, the state has decided they need to die. I'm guessing it's better to write condemned row up there instead of death. Try to trick their mind up a little bit, especially with that blue color. That's supposed to be that color that calms anybody. Before we enter, we're required to put on stab vests. That's right, sir. Strap and off. face shields. Now we're wearing the face shields. Why do we put the... I have never seen no cameras on a damn cell like that. Imagine having that puppy aimed at you. Those got to be probably like uh, the ones that cause self-harm or something. I don't know. But if this was just like a general population cell block, it ain't that bad. It looks pretty nice, but considering that you're on death row, I don't think any block would look nice. The face shields on here. We require the protective equipment of our staff based on the fact that we've had inmates that will dart or they'll throw uh, bodily fluids on our staff. Before inmates are allowed out of their cells, they're strip searched. I'll pat shirts, make sure that they don't have anything in there. See, when I'm watching this, I'm thinking about this dude's time limit. Chances are he's probably going to die back there, so what keeps him going? I mean, are you supposed to stop with the motions of life just because you're on death row? No, many people back there are fighting their charges still. And many of them, man, it'll take, you know, sometimes 20, 30 years. So yes, the motion has to keep going if you were to ask me. Anything's possible on death row, especially the state changing the laws, man. They're always changing the laws, or like you heard the officer said, they can't get the materials to... Uh, do the job. It's a very slow process for many and some it's actually rather quick Make sure that there's nothing in the waistbands. All right, their handcuffs made to back out of their cells Even their showers are individual cells themselves. I mean, just think about it. these dudes know that are they are waiting to die in contact with other inmates You just have to have an open eye be very Crazy. observant when working in death row. Stephanie Kruska has been a corrections officer here for four years. They'll try to say inappropriate things and that's where you have to draw the line. And that happens a lot, so that's where I have to draw the line, is when they start making inappropriate comments. Do you feel safe on the job? I do. See, this is one thing I just don't understand, and I, I've made plenty of videos on this, especially for nurses, man. Look, if you're a female going into a men's prison, you better be prepared to get catcalled. Not only are they going to be talking, but they're going to be thinking about you when you leave. They're going to keep everything in that memory bank for the darkness. Show you a death row cell here. 10 feet by 12 feet. 10 by 12? Walls. Shoot, that's oceanfront property. Over here you got... Cadillac's desk, mat? Uh, toilet area, sink area. There is an outlet where they can plug in an appliance or a TV. They do have access to cable. And this exact cell here is where they bring condemned prisoners 30 days before they're actually executed. Why do they use... Wow. That's probably some of the nicest cable and electrical outlets I've ever seen. Man, this cell looks like it was set up straight for the cameras. Paint job looks fresh as hell. Ain't no dings on it. Outlets look brand spanking new. I've never seen any outlets this damn crisp. But then again, it is death row. So, I don't know. I've never been on death row. But if I were to bet at all, they tuned this cell up a bit. Have access to cable. And this exact cell here is where they bring condemned prisoners 30 days before they're actually executed. Why do they use this cell? Because it's equipped with these cameras and they can oh. watch them 24 hours a day. It's in this cell where inmates eat their last meal. And that meal has to come from the prison kitchen. 
so the story unfolds. As you can see, I ain't watched a whole damn clip. It usually only takes me a minute tops of watching a clip to say, yeah, I'm gonna react to it. But you heard what he said, 30 days or less before you die, you go to that cell. They are watching you 24 seven. And they can watch them 24 hours a day. It's in this cell where inmates eat their last meal. And that meal has to come from the prison kitchen. It's here where they decide who gets their belongings. And we also want to know what he's going to do with the disposition of his body, whether or not we're going to, uh, he'll have family pick that up or he'll uh, be buried in our inmate cemetery itself. In the hours before the execution. How creepy is that? Someone coming to ask you, who do you want to come pick up your dead ass body? And what about those last meals, man? Do you think you'd be able to eat your last meal? Man, I don't think I'd be hungry at all. Let me know in the comments section, would you eat your last meal? The condemned is moved from death row to the death house, this nondescript gray building. Its most striking feature, the smokestack that towers out of the top. That smokestack leads down to the state's gas chamber, which is still an option for some on death row. So I had a cell at one point that faced the death chamber. And you know, during count times, lockdown, stuff like that, I like to look out my window. And I would always look at that building and sometimes there would be smoke pouring right out of it. Might have a little kitchen part in there, I don't know. The witness room, um, you can see back here on the back side of the witness room is the gas chamber that actually a couple of the condemned on death row are still eligible to use if they choose that method of execution. Uh, over here, you've got the lethal injection chamber and it's a big glass partition here and they've got black curtains that are closed when you first walk in. And what I'm showing you are the holding cells where the condemned is brought to the day before the execution. Damn. So you can see the inside of a cell. Talk about a shift of vibes, man, in that nice little cable outlet cell. Straight to the death tank, man. This damn thing's creepy as hell. There are two of them here. There's a small area next to the holding cell where he can speak to his lawyers or clergy. Up to five hours prior to the execution. If necessary, he could be provided a snack. Uh, if necessary, up to a few hours before the execution, if he wanted a sedative, that could also be provided. Sedative, you said? <laughs> I'll take one, sir. And you got the real brave ones that are like, nah, I want to be awake during this puppy. <sighs> cold, cold episode here, y'all. Holding cell, and then he is brought in to the execution chamber. Department of Corrections Director Charles Ryan takes us into the lethal injection chamber, a place news crews have never been allowed in before. So the witnesses will already be in the witness area and they will observe on the monitors that the inmate is brought in, turned around, lifted, and, and placed on the table. Then authorization is given by me to proceed with injecting the other chemicals. Mm. And then we wait. I have a clear conscience in terms of carrying out this duty. And I do not have a uh, professional problem in doing so. Right mm -hmm. now, Arizona is essentially out of the death penalty business, at least for the near future. Even though there are four men right now who have exhausted all their appeals and they're ready to be executed, a judge has put a hold on executions because of a lawsuit brought by inmates. And at the end of this month, all the death penalty drugs the state has will expire and they can't be used. Because state law requires executions to take place 35 days after a death warrant is issued, those drugs will never be used. And new drugs are very difficult to get. Now Utah faced this same problem and passed a law to bring firing squads back if the state couldn't get death penalty drugs. See now that's what I'm talking about. F all the damn smoke chambers and injectors. Line me up, man. If I had a choice, or maybe even like, you know, medieval times, was it the guillotine or something where the thing just drops on your neck? That's got to be instant, right? But what I would never want is that Braveheart jank. God, it did old Mel dirty.